Hey guys, welcome to review of section 1, 1, and 1, 2. So, one of the things we need to do real quick is figure out how to find distances given points. Um, I suggest graphing them a little bit. Sometimes the points can be so easy that you can actually look at it and tell. So in this case, the distance is 7. Um, however, it's also possible that you get two points that are not directly above or next to each other. So, in that case, you're probably going to use Pythagorean Theorem. Uh, which means that we should draw a little triangle, make sure it's the right triangle. By doing that, you can actually count the side lengths. So this one has the side length of 4, that one is 2. Use Pythagorean Theorem, take the square root of 4 squared plus 2 squared. And in this case, uh, let's see, it's 4 plus 16, so the square root of 20, so 2 square root of 5 if you simplify it. Um, this is related to the distance formula, so the 2 comes from taking your x-coordinates and subtracting them, so x2 minus x1, and then we square it in Pythagorean theorem. The 4 comes from taking your y-coordinates and subtracting them, so y2 minus y1, and then we square that. And then to find the distance, you would use the square root of the sum of those two. So x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. And that's the traditional distance formula. So to me, just Pythagorean theorem. Um, graphing functions, look at it carefully, decide what's important. So 1 minus x is important here. It's a square root function. So that cannot be less than 0. So solve it for greater than or equal to 0. So this is, in this case, I would call it a starting point. So the square roots have a limited domain. This one starts at 1 and then goes to the left. So once you have that, you can figure out the y value by making a table. Uh, don't forget about making tables. It's a great way to figure out what's going on. So 0 for your y, plot it, and then find some more points. Square roots, so 1 minus x is 1. For the square root of 1, you would know. That means x has to be 0. So if you plug in 0, you should get another whole number. So negative 2 times 1 is a negative 2. Um, the next square root that we know is 4. So if you do 1 minus x is 4 and solve for x again, you should get another x value that should work in the square root. So plug in a negative 3 and a negative 2 times the square root of 4. So that should give you a negative 4 and that should be enough for this one. So plug your last point and make a nice smooth curve and uh, that's a pretty good square root picture. Um, Tied to that would be figuring out if a point satisfies an equation. So satisfies means that it works. What does that mean again? So works could uh, working could be found different ways. You could plug in the x into the function, and if it works, you should get a 0. So negative 2 times the square root of 0 is uh, 0. So in this case, 1, 0 is indeed on the graph. And that sort of leads to the second part, is you can just look at the graph. Um, so satisfying means is it on the graph or does it work? You have a graph, look at it, is it on there? So yes. So both of those lead to conclusion of yes, it satisfies. Does that work for negative 8, 6? Well, probably not. So plug it in, see what you get. But do keep in mind that by looking at the overall shape there, you can probably tell that a negative 8, 6 isn't going to be on there because the graph is below the y-axis. So and in this case, when you do plug it in, you do find out that it should have been a negative 6. So, no. Um, and then the last thing in 1.1 is you'll be asked to find some intercepts. So finding intercepts, uh, just look at the graph. Uh, this one has three x-intercepts. Figure out exactly where they are and write down your answer. So at a negative 3, you have an x-intercept. At a negative 1, you have an x-intercept. And at 2, we have an x-intercept. You could write that x-intercept equals negative 3, negative 1, 0. And in this case, the equal sort of stands for the x-intercepts occur at negative 3, negative 1, 2. And that's fine as well. Don't forget your y-intercept. It does have 1. Um, figure out that this one is at 0, negative 2. And you could write it again as a coordinate, or you could say y equals a negative 2, because the negative, or the equal sign again means at. In 1, 2, then, you'll be asked to find intercepts based on just the function. That means, to me, plug in zeros. So plug in zeros could mean figuring out 
what happens if y is zero, that's one of the zeros you can plug in, or what happens when x is zero. So let's start with that one, it's usually easier. Plug in zero for x, two times zero plus three, so we end up with uh, zero, three, so that is your y intercept. If you plug in y equals zero, then in essence you end up solving for it. So move the three to the other side, divide by two, so then the x value, or the x coordinates in that is three over two. So there's your x intercept. Um, Function is probably going to be a little more difficult than linear. So what it would look like, for example, with a quadratic? Well, the zero again is easy because you get zero and zero plus two. So that one is easy to find. It's another reason I usually start with it. Um, the other one is going to take a little more work. So oh, and keep in mind that the twos and the threes are your intercepts. So that's the function of it in the form of the equation. So if I plug in zero here, initially I don't really like that negative. So I'm going to see if I can factor it out. And then how do you solve this quadratic? Well, factoring, unfortunately, doesn't work. The quadratic formula does. I'll fill it in as we go. 3 plus or minus the square root of b squared, so that's 9, minus 4 times a, and a is the 1, and then c is a negative 2. Just remember my factor out the negative 1. Divide by 2, figure out the square root. 3 plus or minus the square root of 17. 17 is great. It doesn't break down, so you may leave it. And then write down that you have x-intercepts. So you can write it this way. That's a nice lazy way. Um, if you want to split it into two separate points, you can. Just grab the 3 plus the square root of 17 over 2, 0 as one of your points. And then the other point would be 3 minus the square root of 17 over 2, um, 0. So uh, listing intercepts can be done different ways. We also have some questions about symmetry. So x-axis symmetry. Um, so that means you go across your x-axis. But if you look at across your x-axis, then it means that the x value is not going to stay, uh, not going to change. So the x stays the same. The y value, however, does. It changes from y to a negative y, so it becomes the opposite. So if 2, 3 is on there, then 2, negative 3 would be on there as well if I had symmetry. y-axis symmetry, um, sort of the the opposite then, so you go across your y-axis, your y-values don't change, your x-values become opposites. So again, if 2, 3 is on the graph, then a negative 2, 3 also has to be on the graph because of uh, the x changing into a negative x. And then we have one more type of symmetry, and that's origin symmetry. So um, origin symmetry, not really scientific or mathematically, but both the values, both the x's and the y's are going to change. So what does that mean? That x, y becomes negative x, negative y, so 2, 3 will be a negative 2, negative 3 if I have a graph with origin symmetry. That part's easy. Testing for symmetry is a bit of a pain because it means that I have to actually figure out algebraically if I have symmetry by plugging in for either for your x's, for your y's, or for both of them. And, and that's a little tedious. So um, let's go through a full example. So x axis symmetry, x stays the same, so the y becomes a negative y. So what I'm going to do now is plug in the negative y and figure out what happens, and then I'm going to compare it to x squared minus 9 divided by x squared plus 2. So after I fill in a negative y and an x, I'm going to solve for y and figure out if the answer that I end up with is the same as x squared minus 9. So negative y equals x squared minus 9, x squared plus 2, because the x's don't change. Um, I don't like the negative on that side, so multiply by negative. I do need to multiply by negative there, so let me erase a little bit. So multiply by negative, and then you get x squared minus 9 over x squared plus 2. And now compare. Is a negative, and then in parentheses, x squared minus 9 divided by x squared plus 2, is that the same as x squared minus 9 divided by x squared plus 2? And hopefully you can see that no, it's not the same. So if it's not the same, it will not have x-axis symmetry. Y-axis symmetry, same story, although one small difference in the y-axis symmetry, the y value is going to stay the same. So I'm going to plug in a negative x where I have an x and solve. Um, this one's easier because it is already going to give me y equals. So negative x squared minus 9 divided by a negative x squared 
uh, make sure you put the square on the outside. So I better change that as well. So negative x in brackets squared plus two. Um, the squares are going to cancel them, so are going to cancel the negative, so that I end up with y equals x squared minus nine divided by x squared plus two. Again, compare that to the given equation. So in this case, you end up with both the left and the right side equal to each other. So yes, it does have symmetry. It has y-axis symmetry. Then finally, you end up with origin symmetry. So origin symmetry means you have to change both the negative, uh, both the x's and y's to negatives. Um, and I usually would do y-axis first and then, pot, and then origin, and you'll see here in a second y. So the negative y equals. And then you sort of cheat. If you just did y-axis symmetry, and then you that simplified form and just copy it down over here. You already know what happens there. And at this point, it, well, basically we're back in the first problem, but that just depends on the type of the problem. So let me write it out. Move the negative over. So, and then at the end of it, compare that. And you can see no symmetry. Finally, last thing is key functions. Um, there are certain functions that we run into a lot. You should be pretty familiar with them. You should be able to graph them or sketch them fairly quickly. And uh, three of them are listed right here. And the reason I'm doing these is because one, they're in your homework, and two, they have a little bit to do with symmetry. So x squared looks like this. Uh, important feature is that it has a vertex. So the vertex is, the, in this case, the minimum point, And it has y-axis symmetry. So across the y-axis, you will find the same values for opposite x's x cubed uh, starts like an x squared, but then that bend just continues, so it does go up and down. Um, does not have a vertex. It does have origin symmetry. So um, in this case, the origin, it's an important point. It's usually you need to find that for x cubes. And then finally, 1 over x um, looks a little like this. It has sort of a fancy name, and uh, it has two branches. So the fancy name would be the, uh, a hyperbolic. And it has several key features. So um, it has asymptotes. Um, so asymptote, it has a horizontal asymptote, in this case the x-axis, and it has a vertical asymptote. And in this case, the vertical is the y-axis. And if you look at it, you can see that it does, again, have origin symmetry. So you see a couple of these in your homework. Um, hopefully, all this rings a bell. And uh, thanks for listening, and good luck with the homework.